People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Hey, let's just talk about CGM for a few minutes. CGM, Continuous Glucose Monitoring, has created a whole new set of knowledge and understanding for people with diabetes, with prediabetes, even with just simple insulin resistance. And it's helping us understand blood glucose patterns and metabolism. We're finding a lot more people had a lot worse glucose metabolism than we thought. We're finding that people go into an insulin resistance phase for a couple of days and we didn't know it. So the science is changing in this space, but these are not perfect instruments. No lab instrument is perfect. These are imperfect instruments attempting to measure a biological process. Even the makers understand this and suggest using finger sticks and lab tests, which are imperfect as well. You know, it's classic. When we get a, a standard lab test, it will include what's called a, a Chem 25 or a metabolic panel, which does include a fasting glucose. It will also include an insulin survey, which also has a fasting glucose. So you've got the same patient, same time, same blood draw, same lab tech, but one section, the metabolic panel went to one section of the lab and the other sample, the OGTT went to another part of the lab. We'll typically get fasting glucose levels as far as 10 apart. And you really don't get any better than Quest, which most of these are being done at. It's a national reference lab. Rethink that. It's a great teaching experience or opportunity for me because I have so many people that are so rigid and think my Libre is five points off. Well, think about it. Realize that these lab tolerances are not perfect. They're not like an engineering tolerance for a ball bearing. Have realistic expectations for the device. Recheck unusual numbers. Most insurance companies will not pay for a CGM unless you have serious level of insulin dependent diabetes. Well, obviously that's too late. That's some typical bad insurance company logic. Now, remember this, like blood pressure, early morning glucose tends to reach lowest levels between two and six a.m. In addition, most CGMs look at extracellular fluid glucose, not exactly capillary blood. So you get a little bit of differences there. Some of it's called the choo-choo effect. I won't get into the details on it, but know the instrument that you're using and don't be too rigid about, don't have unrealistic expectations. You will learn a lot if you use this. Typically work with people that have gone 65 years with never knowing what their, how their blood sugar reacts to oatmeal, for example. And they'll tell me, Doc, no, I eat oatmeal for breakfast because it's heart healthy. And I'll say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you about it. Just use a CGM, use your Libre 2 or Libre 3, and watch your blood sugar after you eat your heart healthy oatmeal breakfast. And then they come back with a major learning point that maybe oatmeal is not the most heart healthy breakfast. So think about one other thing. Think about your, the alarms. If I've heard it once, I've heard it three dozen times. Patients come back to me and say, doc, this thing is wearing me out. The alarm goes off that my blood sugar is too low at three in the morning. So I'll get up and I'll go eat a cookie and then I'll go back to bed and it'll go off again an hour later. And I said, what level did you have it on? They said 70. And I thought, hmm, somebody on a low carb diet, once you get carb adapted or fat adapted, you're going to at minimum go into the 70s, usually into the 60s, and many of us even in, into the 50s once you're fat adapted. So you got to fix that alarm and don't get up and start eating major sources of carbs just because an alarm went off. So you say, well, why did they set that alarm that way? Because again, the makers and the insurance companies are using these devices for people with insulin. If your blood sugar goes down into the 60s and you're on insulin, yeah, you need to be careful because insulin can drop you into hypoglycemia very quickly. But if you're not on insulin, that's not a risk. Disable the alarm. Again, unless you're on insulin, don't use the alarm at all. These are healthy dips. You'll feel better those days.